Okay, so how to attempt a question on LLD? So it's very natural to feel overwhelmed when somebody asks you to design an online shopping system. Let's say something like Amazon. You might feel that, hey, there are a whole lot of things inside it. So there is going to be a front end, which will be powered by HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And then there'll be some back end, which will contain a lot of APIs inside it. And then there'll be databases. Depending upon use cases, there can be varieties of databases like Mongo or MySQL, which could further be distributed in nature. Data could be sharded, replicated, so many things, right? On top of that, you can have a layer of caching, you can have load balancers. So there are so many things, right? So what exactly is to be designed, that has to be first specified. Otherwise, we won't be able to solve an open-ended question like this in a limited time frame. So let me give you an analogy of world map. Let's say you're looking at a world map and now you focus your attention on a particular continent and then you focus more and then you focus on a particular country and then you focus on state and then maybe on few towns and then you decide that hey these are the towns that i have got to address that i have got to work upon the same thing needs to be done in case of any open-ended low-level design question as well so when you look at amazon you see that there is a front end definitely there is a back end and then there is a database side in most of the lld interviews a working ui is not expected Similarly, you are not expected to write a code that connects to some database, that manages some connection pools and all such sorts of things. What you are supposed to focus your concentration on is the core server side backend logic, application code basically. Now there the important thing that you can start your journey from is an API. You can imagine that API is just like a function that takes a request, does something on top of it and returns some response. While designing an API, you can imagine it like a flat function. You don't have to worry about how that API is going to be called. You don't have to worry about what is going to be the timeout at the client side, what is going to be their retry strategy, and what kind of networking protocols they'll be using. No, nothing like that. Similarly, you don't have to worry about the databases. You can just have a mock data store, or you can just have few hash maps instead of MySQL tables. And then you can focus your concentration solely on the APIs and the underlying libraries and modules. So let's say now you know what you have to design. You have to focus your attention on the core business logic, which is your application side code. So here now you can just figure out that there are so many things that are going to be out there again. So you will have to zoom in more. So if you think about something like an online shopping system, you might have a separate payment service that processes payments. You might have a separate order service that manipulates order. And then you might have a separate notification service that sends different forms of notifications. So here you have to figure out what is it that you got to do. So let's say you have got to work on the APIs of order service. And then you realize that the first important API is going to be fetch order details, which will take an order ID and maybe an order type. There can be different types of order, like a general order or a prime order, which is ordered by a prime customer. And then you got to figure out a way to fetch the order details for that order ID. So let's say you store the order details of a normal customer in some other data store. And for prime, you store in some other form of data store then probably your underlying libraries need to be a bit extensible. So you might want to open up an interface called as order fetcher, which can have different implementations. Let's say prime order fetcher and normal order fetcher. So these are some scopes of extensibility inside your system. So tomorrow, if uh, let's say some other kind of order type is introduced and you wish to write another concrete implementation of order fetcher, you can easily do that. So your system, allows for extension, not the modification. By the way, this is one of the principles of design, but I think this example gives you an idea that how you can scope down an open-ended thing and then work upon what exactly is expected. Similarly, when you are opening interfaces, then first you just write down the skeletal of it. You just mention the methods that the interface is going to contract. 
Similarly, you uh, write down the empty concrete implementations and do not worry about what are going to be the uh, algorithms and data structures that are going to power those concrete implementations. You can do that later, but first you can just uh, open empty interfaces, empty classes and all such sorts of things. And then you can deep dive on the implementation part and what kind of data structures are to be used and all such stuffs. One more thing. While attempting a low-level design question, there are two general approaches that people follow. First is bottom-top. In bottom-top approach, what people do is they start from the innermost classes or I would say the sync classes. So let's say you have to design an order service. So instead of starting right from the API, they would first design data models like order and then they would design the, the classes that have to lie on top of them and then the classes that have to lie on top further and then finally uh, they write API. In this case, what happens most of the times is that you end up with so many classes and while weaving them together you realize that there were few mistakes that were made. So maybe the arguments were improper or the return type was improper, all such sorts of things. Another way of attempting low-level design question is top-bottom approach in which you start right from the top, which is from API itself, and then as in when you need the feel of different modules, you create them by taking a call whether there should be concrete classes in themselves or whether they need to be interfaces to support for extension and all such sorts of stuff. So generally, top-to-bottom approach is something that we recommend and it allows you to write a functionally correct code in a shorter duration as compared to the first one. Okay, apart from these, the important things that will be evaluated how you uh, attempt a low-level design question is that how good you were in converting the requirements to the code. Requirements, use cases, you must have heard of it. So I would add one more phrase to it. It's not enough to have just requirements. You should have concrete requirements. What I mean by concrete requirement is, if somebody tells you that, hey, my system should support notifications, this is a little vague. You should probably ask, what kind of notifications? Do we want just SMS-based notification or SMS as well as email notification? So that gives you a clue that what are the scopes for extension in your design? And then you can design accordingly. So in any low-level design interview, extension is of paramount importance, followed by maintainability, readability, and all the other uh, clean code principles. So this is how you should be narrowing down an open-ended problem to very concrete problem and then deliver it in a limited frame of time in a low-level design interview.